Hey everyone, welcome to episode 10 of the Never Split Up podcast. My name's Nolan, I'm here with Anthony, and today we have a good one. We're covering Get Out. So welcome to episode 10. We made it, Ant. 10 episodes. How you doing today? Yes. Awesome. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm, awesome. I'm excited. I'm not awesome. It's a Monday, but <laughs> could be yeah. better, but it's, I'm yeah. excited to talk <laughs> about Get Out. Me too, me too. I watched it a couple times over the weekend. I, I mentioned previously on the last episode, or even on our top 10 episode from 2022, that I haven't seen this movie in a couple of years. Okay. I've watched it a few times over the years, but this movie is now uh, coming up on six years old. I can't believe it. Came That's out in crazy. 2017. We're now in 2023. I still am like, just feels like 2019 was yesterday, but yeah. you know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I was really excited to watch this. I watched it a couple times and I'm really glad we're covering this. Um, if, if you've watched uh, our top 10 episode, you know that, uh, another one of Jordan Peele's movies, Nope, made my top 10 list. I, I won't completely spoil it for people who haven't seen that episode. Um, and it's actually tracking pretty well. We got a, a decent amount of views for that. So thank ev- Thanks. Uh, thank you everyone to, um, who's listened. So. Why don't we uh, talk about Jordan Peele a little bit in the cast? Why don't, why don't you go over that, and then we can get into our overall thoughts. Yeah, cool. So Get Out, like you said, I can't believe it came out in 2017. I feel like I just saw this movie like a year ago for the first time in theaters. But um, this is Jordan Peele's feature film directorial debut. It's pretty insane. Um, let me give you guys a little synopsis before we get into it with the cast. Um, so if, I'm sure everyone knows the concept of this movie but a young african-american visits his white girlfriend's parents for the weekend where his simmering uneasiness about their reception of him eventually reaches a boiling point and like i said jordan peele he wrote this (laughs) yeah you know fair synopsis yeah (laughs) (laughs) he wrote this he directed it he produced it all the above um he actually won an oscar uh, screenplay for this script which is pretty crazy because we all know how the Academy feels about horror movies, you know, fuck them. But yeah. uh, he did one for this. And <laughs> yeah. uh, our star of the movie, Daniel Kaluuya, he was actually nominated for Best Actor as well. So Daniel Kaluuya, he plays our protagonist, Chris. He's excellent in the movie. Uh, who else we have? We have Allison Williams. She plays his girlfriend, Rose. She's been in a few Blumhouse movies. We have Bradley Whitford. How Everyone knows who Bradley Whitford is, I hope. He plays uh, Alice. Uh, Rose's dad, Dean. We have Catherine Keener. She plays Missy, the mom. She's been in a bunch of movies. We have Keith Stanfield in a small role. I think this was actually his breakout role in Get Out. So Jordan Peele really put him on the map. So that's our main cast. And then we have a little small appearances. We have Steven Root. I know, Nolan, you're a big fan of him. Yeah. (laughs) So that's our cast. (laughs) Yeah. So it's good cast. Very well made. Um, Jordan Peele for his first movie. It's pretty crazy, especially coming from a comedian background. I love what he was able to do in the horror genre. He still has, obviously, the touches of comedy in this movie. It's a, I would call it a horror satire, but a great debut. Yeah, I touched on this um, previously, but I, I love uh, his transition to horror because being uh, such, such a fantastic comedy writer, I mean, when, you, when you're doing comedy, obviously writing comes to the forefront. Um, so the fact that he's able to take that and, and put it into these horror movies, I I think it blends amazingly. And it's, it's not just the comedy in these movies, like the writing is at the forefront in all aspects. And he really, uh, takes pride. I think every one of his movies that he's done so far, he's, he's written them and he's, he's written them and he's done the screenplay on as well as directed. So, um, I, I really love that he takes uh, pride in these movies enough to, to, um, do all of that he produces writes and directs and has some cameos too well little easter egg cameos some voice cameos that he does which are and i'm fun. happy that uh for the most part he's staying within he has different subgenres, but he's staying within the horror genre so i love that he's really uh sticking with it yeah he is he's exploring that genre and pushing the boundaries but yes. i think that's good so you and know every movie of his is arguably like a complete 180 from each other. Like you can't look at get out and be like, Oh, that's like us. Oh, that's like, Nope. They're all different. Yeah. And of course the obvious, uh, all, all of his movies have black leads, which is awesome. We, we don't see enough of that, especially in horror. So it's really cool to see uh, great horror films coming out with, uh, mostly, uh, 
I guess Get Out is a little more balanced, but his other two movies definitely have mostly black cast, but with a black lead, which is um, really cool to see that he's uh, taking an initiative on that. Yeah, for sure. He writes his movies for black leads because he wants them, you know, he wants them to be in the headlining horror movie of the, you know, horror movie of the year of the month. He wants, you know, more exposure for that. And I love that. Um, I also want to mention the composer of this movie, Michael Abels. He composed all of Jordan Peele's movies and he is fantastic. I won't reveal which one's my favorite, but I mean, I know you love Nope, but each score is so damn good. Even I forgot the open from the opening uh, sequence in this movie, right when the title drops, I'm like, damn, I forgot how good this score was. So good. So he's followed him throughout his three movies as well. Really good. Yeah. And we'll get to us, but that scored, man. Whew. So good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I I like the consistency too. You can kind of tell that those three movies fit i mean it's the same director same writer and he right. has, i didn't know that he had the same guy doing the score yes for all three but it makes sense now that i'm kind of uh hearing those movies in my head it makes sense that it's all the same guy so that's really cool yeah i actually have each of his scores on uh like i play them on repeat because they're just so damn good yeah that's awesome you're a nerd like that so yeah i'm obsessed <laughs> with the scores <laughs> so many movies <laughs> yeah i i listen to like you know actual music and this guy's listening to soundtracks and i'm like running to like the soundtrack of scores like yes pump up good work yeah awesome so yeah yeah uh that's that's the cast Uh, you pretty much kind of went through that i guess we'll do our overall thoughts like we normally do before we get into it uh just uh i will announce the winner i'm eager to announce the winner of the never split up poll from last episode from our sinister episode thanks everyone uh, who voted. We got a pretty good turnout for our voting this time. So I'm glad more people are starting to vote. And um, a special thanks to everyone who voted for me because I finally won. It's my first win. And uh, I think it was a no brainer, me personally. But <laughs> <laughs> I know and, you guys uh, felt bad for him that it was episode 10 and yeah. didn't win yet. So that's why you gave yeah. it to him. I'll give it so to that's, you. That's my first victory. So uh, <laughs> at the end of this episode, I'll get to go first on my choice. And I, I have a I have a unique one, so I think I'm going to surprise you with my choice. But I think it's a strong one, though. I think I might okay, have a cool. chance to win, so should be fun. But uh, yeah, that'll be at the end of the review, right before we get into our overall score. But um, for now, we'll get into our overall thoughts. And yeah. just a heavy disclaimer, just so we don't forget, um, please see this movie, guys. Yes. These are spoil not spoiler free reviews. The we are going to get into heavy spoilers. Uh, pretty much right away because this is a movie that um, I implore you to not only watch, but watch multiple times and I'm not going to spoil anything yet, but once you watch it the first time, you'll understand why you would want to watch it the second time. There are so many hidden things throughout the movie that kind of not, they don't give it away obviously because it's pretty hard to, you know, guess this ending on the first watch through. But when you watch it again, you're like, Oh, that's why they said that or what? That's why they did that. Everything in this movie is so, carefully planned by jordan peele and it's really cool every time i watch this movie i like it a little bit more so oh good um yeah my score goes up a little bit more every time so if we would have done this movie you know a year from now and i watched it five more times it'd probably be higher than my score today that's how cool it is and how many things you can pick up on you know yep i agree why don't you go first uh we'll, okay we'll, we'll do overall thoughts and then we'll get into it So, yeah, I remember seeing this movie for the first time when it came out, you know, in February of 2017, and I love this movie so much. It's awesome. Um, It's a, I like it because it's a crowd pleaser. You can watch it as an entertaining horror movie without the themes if you want, but he also makes it so after the movie you're thinking about the themes. Um, So I like a director that doesn't shove stuff down my throat. But they have the context there, if we want to take it. Yeah. So it's not a it's not a sto- it's not a message with the movie attached to it. This is a movie with themes incorporated into it. So it's smart and clever. And I know when you Google this movie, a lot of the the subgenre of this movie is titled elevated horror, and that is is it really? My, it, it, if you Google <laughs> it, that's a lot of people refer to it as elevated horror, and that's probably yeah. my least favorite phrase of all time because horror is horror you know not this subgenre doesn't make it better than a slasher or a typical horror movie i think the term elevated horror 
is a term created by, you know, pretentious critics who don't want to admit that horror movies are actually awesome. So, you know, yeah. I would classify this as a psychological horror, or if you want to even say like metaphorical horror, you know, our house horror, whatever you want, but no, it's a horror movie. It's a damn good horror movie. And it's has a great lead performance and a great directional directorial debut from Jordan Peele. It's awesome. And I uh, actually, I watched some interviews with Jordan Peele and he picked Daniel Kuliya to be the star. He did the take um, when he's getting hypnotized as his audition. And he said every single time his tear dropped, like he, he had his tear drop on cue when really? he said a line. He's like, you have the role right now. <laughs> That's like he, amazing. Every time he said a specific word, yeah. the same tear dropped. He's like, wow. He's like, this is why I quit acting and started directing. So that was all, this guy's, that, that was, was all, all natural. Him. That was all yeah, him. Wow. Yeah. So Those Jordan are some Peele, strong tears yeah. too. Like very it's, prominent that's, tears. <laughs> that's that's his like Oscar scene. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he said uh, Jordan Peele's like, that's why I stopped acting and directing because you can't beat that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he hired that's him. Right. Yeah. This is an awesome movie. I mean, you, it's a crowd pleaser at the end, but it's also an important movie. You know, I remember, you know, at the end of this movie, we'll get into it, but you know, there's, there's cheering at the end, but you also, when you're leaving the theater, you have people are having these conversations about like, Oh, like, there's a lot to say about this movie. Yeah, I love this movie. I won't say where, I, where it ranks in his uh, trilogy of films so far, but it's damn good movie. Yeah, we'll, we'll eventually cover all three, and then we'll do our ranking after we cover Nope, which is his latest film. We'll, we'll do our ranking, so that'll be fun. But yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. I think you, uh, you hit it uh, when you said that nothing feels forced. He has these... No, Yeah. And I think when you craft a story from the ground up um, and take the care that you do, like Jordan Peele does, especially um, like you said, he tailors these movies for black leads and nothing feels forced because it's based around that. And it's not like a shoe in from the studio. It's it's, it's, yeah, yeah, organic. That's a great word for it. Um, So I definitely love that too. And he's done that with all three of his movies. Now that I'm thinking about it, uh, Get out, especially, and and for this to be his directorial debut, I mean, man, insane. I remember when this came out. I mean, he was the talk of the town, man. He just like instantly left his mark, and people were just clamoring over this movie, and they couldn't wait. I remember when us started uh, getting promo and trailers, like people were just going crazy, like, oh, finally, like Jordan Peele's next movie. Um, so this movie really. I, I don't have the exact numbers, but it made a killing. It made so, over like two hundred million dollars. So uh, this movie was yeah. made through Blumhouse, and they're known for their lower budgets. So mm-hmm. it was budget of four point five million, and this is the guy's wow. directorial debut. Four point five million budget. It made over two hundred and fifty five million dollars <laughs> worldwide. I mean, so there he's you go. getting good paychecks now. <laughs> yeah, there you but go. It's crazy. I mean, after this, it's they, crazy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Did uh, Blumhouse do uh, his other two movies? No, because uh, Universal did his other two movies as well, but okay. not Blumhouse because he got you know he got his budgets for the. <laughs> I was going to say he yeah. must have gotten a blank check for the rest yeah. of the movies because yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, and I love uh, what he says. If you actually watch him, he says, "I make I made Get Out to be an entertaining movie first. He even says that I wanted you guys to be entertained first, but then also if you leave." and you're having these discussions that are important, that's a plus. So he knows what he's doing. He's yeah. making an entertaining horror movie, but it's an important one. And it's, like mm-hmm. I said, organic is the best word to describe how he inputs his themes and social messages in these movies. You know, And like you said, I hope he doesn't uh, stray too far if he continues to direct. I hope he stays in that horror genre because I th- he's, he's, he's got this great formula. And it, it's not like all of his movies are formulaic and like that they're the same it's they feel organic and they're so different but he he still rides that line on all three movies and he's really nailed it like from the yeah you're i like what you said i think that they're all original but his touch is the through line on all three of them you can tell jordan peele's touch is on all three Mm -hmm. movies and that's what the comparison is between all three of them Mm -hmm. yeah um, but yeah, other than that, my overall thoughts are I, I love this movie too. Uh, like I said, I, I I I only saw it once in the theaters. 
And I believe I saw it. I don't think I saw it opening weekend because I remember there was already buzz about how good the movie was. So I think I suffered from a little uh, letdown syndrome, if you want to say. Like, I... yeah, it was a little uh, not overhyped because I think it's an incredible movie. But yeah. I left the theater liking it. And as I watched it again and again, I realized like how masterful this movie is. And again, guys, watch this movie multiple times. If you've seen this movie like once or twice, like a few years ago, go back, watch it again. And like, I've seen this movie now that we're doing this podcast, I watched it a couple times. I've probably seen this movie at least a half dozen times, probably more over the years. And I still pick up on things like little subtle, because in every scene you can like look at a different character that or actor that you looked at the first time. And they're doing something that you didn't notice yeah. the first or second time or the third time, especially the the party scene. There's so right. many different nuances in that party scene right. that are just awesome. And I think uh, you said it best, too, when you said you were listening to Jordan Peele. He wants to make an entertaining movie. I think if you take away the creepiness of the score and everything, it's still an important movie. And I st- oh, it's yeah. still a good movie if, if it was just played as like a drama or something, you know. So... um yeah, it seems like we both loved it. I will say, it. like, this movie also, in my opinion, is his most accessible to, like, a mainstream. Like, you can show this to your mom and your dad, and they won't be like, what the hell is going on? This is the most accessible movie of his trilogy of films, in my opinion. Okay. You can go see. And um, I think they, I don't, they all kind of are. I, I mean, think Us, us might be the us, least. Us is definitely the least. Yes. Yeah, it I has think a lot nope going is pretty on. accessible. You have to, like... Like us is a movie you're going to be googling after that and be like, "What the hell's going on?" <laughs> yeah, um, us us is definitely weirder than the oh, other yeah. two, but I think I Nope say, is pretty uh, accessible too. I would say it's Nope accessible. is accessible. <laughs> you don't think so? Because I <laughs> no, know a few accessible. people that aren't uh, horror it, fans that I've watched accessible. it and really liked it's it. It's just a different uh, it's a different kind of Jordan Peele horror movie. Because that okay. movie also that has themes too, a lot of themes too. Yeah. I would say it's accessible because it has it. Nope has the most like subgenres mixed in, you know, like it's a Western. And so like, if you like those, you'll, you'll get those elements in that movie. So it can kind of bring all those people together so they can all like it. I'm more, I mean, it more as like most accessible is like, you're an idiot. If you don't understand the subtext of get out, like the first time you're watching it, like, you know, he's talking about racism, this entire movie. Like that's, like you're an idiot <laughs> if you don't know that's the theme of the movie. Like that's what it, like, oh, it's okay. well, like you'll yeah. get the message like right away. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But it, he's yeah. not like dumbing it down either. No. You, you know what I just... mean? He's not like pretending that we're a dumb audience. Oh, no. But it's, no, no, it's no, no. you're right. Yeah. It's accessible without playing dumb. Just with the so dialogue what, yeah. alone, you're like, holy shit. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. these people. Yeah. But um, I will say the movie is a horror satire. So it's, it's, I would describe it as uneasy and tense, but me personally, cause I'm not in Chris's shoes in my everyday life. You know, it's, this movie doesn't keep me up at night, like afraid to go to bed. It's a horror satire. That's uneasy. And it's a disturbing reality for, you know, the African American community, you know, in a lot of these situations, but it's not scary. Like you're, you're going to be able to go to bed after watching this movie. Fine. No, it's yeah, just something you'll yeah, be yeah. talking about and thinking about. Just want to yeah. get that out of the way so people don't think they're going to be watching this terrifying Jordan Peele movie. I don't want them to get, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I will to say, get too hyped about that. Yeah, I will say the first watch through, there are a couple like what the fuck moments, like what's going on. But it's really just your mind trying to like figure out the right. situation. It's tense, very tense. Yeah. I mean, the third act is just nonstop tension. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like we both loved this movie. Yeah. We'll see. All right. <laughs> we'll see. How much. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to get into the gritty? Yeah, let's let's get into the opening scene and we'll we'll take it from here. Again, guys, uh major spoilers because we're gonna uh now talk about this movie um as if everyone's seen it already, because right. again, I touched on it already, but I wanna highlight some subtle acting performances and lines, especially line delivery. And the writing of this movie. Yeah, I don't know. Is so if, I don't know if "subtle" is the right word for some of these lines. <laughs> um, a few of them are. You'll be surprised. Okay, I picked okay. up on a couple that seem normal on the surface, but you know, <laughs> I guess because you know you're watching a horror movie, you're like you know kind of looking for that stuff. 
But okay. yeah, yeah. All right, let's get into this. Let's get into this opening scene, which is this is my, one of the creepiest scenes in the movie. The opening scene. Yeah. Um. So we open. There's a young black man. He's walking through like the neighborhood suburbs. It looks like you know. A, it actually looks like the street from Halloween, the original with the suburbs. And it's funny because if you listen to Jordan Peele's interviews, he Halloween's one of his favorite movies and John Carpenter's one of one of his favorite directors. And this opening scene when his was his homage paying respect to Halloween. You know, the perfect oh, cool. the perfect neighborhood street that's not really perfect. Um so yeah, so we follow I thought that was cool because if you know me, obviously you know how special Halloween is to me. So we follow a young black man. He's walking down the street and uh, there's this car that's like, you know, slowly passes him. And also that scene, I don't know if you watched like the head and the car turns. And that also mirrors like when Michael Myers drives down the street and his head turns toward Lori the first time. thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. But um, so the car slowly passes him. And then, you know, he's walking and he's lost. He's like following directions on his phone. And the car turns around and the car just stops besides him. And um, I'd be like, he does exactly what I do. He's like, yeah, fuck this. <laughs> and he turns around. And I think there's a song that's like saying run rabbit run <laughs> playing in the car. So, uh, yeah, he says fuck that. And he turns around and he starts walking the other way. I would be sprinting. I don't know why he's walking. But um, he looks back and he sees the car stop. But the front driver's side door is opened. And then a masked man like pops up behind him and abducts him. And that is the homage to Halloween, the opening scene. Then we cut to get out with that beautiful score michael abels Mm -hmm. i would have been out of there i wouldn't have walked into the street too that was kind of a weird move i would have stayed on the sidewalk and i would have started sprinting especially when he sees the door is open i wouldn't even have hesitated as soon as i saw that out of the corner of my eye i would have been gone but it's it's funny commentary because in the beginning he he feels uneasy but then he shuts it down because, like, oh, this would never happen in this neighborhood. Mm. So it, Jordan Peele is already doing that brilliant, you know, commentary without even us knowing what the hell anything is about. So, yeah. but yeah, I agree. I would have been like, my advice after watching endless horror movies is trust your instinct. <laughs> if you feel uneasy, whether it's a car passing you or whether it's something stupid, just trust your gut. And this guy, he Better trusts his gut too late. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that that was a cool. I like the opening scene a lot. Me too. Yeah, he gets abducted. Yeah, he does. And uh just cuts. We don't know his fate or anything. We don't uh, even know his we don't even know his name and we don't know anything about him. Don't know. Just nope. a young black man walking down the street. So then we, we cut to Brooklyn. Definitely won't see him again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe not. So yeah. then we cut to Brooklyn and we're introduced to our protagonist of the movie, Chris. He's a photographer and his girlfriend Rose um chris is black and rose is white interracial couple they are packing to go to her parents for the weekend and uh i think it's funny the first thing he says there's like do they know i'm black and uh you know he's like it should be something you mentioned since i'm the first black person you dated and she's like no she kind of makes jokes about it she's like yeah no my dad he loves everyone he's like my dad would have voted for obama for a third time they're they're not they're not racist they're just your typical uh old american parents so that's Mm -hmm. how we're introduced to the couple yeah, every time he brings up throughout the movie, especially in the beginning here with Rose about the fact that he's black and they're a white family and he's looking for an answer, she always hesitates for a split second. So it, her answers are very calculated. But they're always and, so uh, positive and like, uh, she's just fake. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, well... <sighs> You thought so? You thought fake? Because the first time through, I wasn't getting... She seemed pretty well, genuine. She was a good actor. She I mean, was when, no, a no, good no, actor. No, she was great. You know. She's played the part well. But, like, he's pretty much saying, like, give your parents a heads up. Like, you don't want to be walking to this. She's like, no, no, no. She's, like, acting oblivious. You know what I mean? Well, that, that makes sense for a girl who's never dated a black guy before, right? Like, she's downplaying it, trying she's to... Never dated a black guy. Well, yeah, at this point, <laughs> that's what she's telling us. So, uh, right. she's but very that's naive. that's what led me to... Yeah. I, I mean... I've seen so many movies, so like once that first conversation happened, I'm like, no, no, something's not right with this girl. Really? That she didn't (laughs) tell her parents that he was black? No, that she put it off. She like pushed it off right away. With and she's like, yo, no, my dad, you know, he's not racist, but like, why did you have to go to that extent right away and say that? Okay, 
I, I yeah, okay. she's great. She, actually, yeah. she's one of my after Daniel Kaluuya. She's my second favorite performance in the entire movie because the way she switches. There's one mm-hmm. scene that's my favorite scene of the whole movie, and it involves her. She's mm-hmm. great, but yeah, I thought I'm like, why is she like right away going to that stance? Like, no, he's not racist. He's blah blah. blah. I'm like, hmm. Don't trust this girl, Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's our introduction. And they're, you know, they're, they end up, you know, they're on their way to her parents. They're driving. And Chris, he's trying to smoke a cigarette. And Rose takes a ciggy and he, she throws it out the window. And uh, then we get Chris. He calls his best friend, Rod, who is my man of the movie, Rod, who works for TSA. TSA and Rod's going to be taking. <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's my, that's the. <laughs> Damn, whoever wrote the, oh, Jordan Peele, he wrote that line. But, damn, <laughs> yeah. what a good line. Well, that's where the comedy, you know, background comes so in. So good. The delivery but, uh, is great. Yeah, so Rod's taking care of Chris's dog, Sid, which is also another nod to one of my other favorite horror movies, Scream, Sid, Sidney Prescott. So Jordan is Peele, it? he's, yeah, he's already. Did he's he already confirm really, that or are you just yeah, projecting no, he, that? He's oh, okay. No, no, no. I projected it, but then I confirmed because he talked about really? it in the interview that he okay. loves Scream and Halloween. Okay. Cause they go hand in hand, screaming Halloween. But um, I was like, this guy's for already, you. They uh, do. He, yeah, <laughs> he's doing a uh, he's doing a lot. Like it's gonna be hard for me not to like this movie. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so Rod's gonna be taking care of Chris's dog. So that's why he's having that conversation. And Rod's like, you know, joking around with uh, Rose, and then Chris just hangs up on him. But um, you know, Rod before they hang up, Rod says, you know, you didn't take my advice. Don't go to a girl white uh, girlfriend's white parents' house for the weekend. You crazy. <laughs> And then Chris yeah. hangs up on him, but I'm like, Rod is stating facts throughout this entire movie. <laughs> and uh, Chris is just taking a little bit too long to catch on. But yeah. um, so after that, we get this scene where this deer just like friggin' dashes out in front of the car. So they hit a deer. And uh, the deer is still alive. I like this because you see how uh, sincere and like heartfelt Chris is because Rose is just like chilling by the car, but Chris, he like goes to invest- investigate the noises because we find out, you know, the deer's like slowly dying in the woods. So, you know, Chris feels bad. So he tells her to call the cops. So the cops come, they put the deer out of his misery. But then the officer asks. Yeah, it Chris, was it was a good yeah, scene. Yeah. We have a whole subplot of uh, his yes. mother uh, with his childhood. Yes, so yes. he's he's seeing his we mother. We slowly and the find deer. out about that. Yeah, yes. that's one of the big reveals at the end. Um, you know, his mother died when he was younger. But you don't from know, a hit and run from a hit and run. But you don't know like like the, all the circumstances the and why he out, feels so right. guilty. So I thought that was cool that that, that kind of set things up. It's a hint and, to uh, what his story because he you know eventually he explains it, but it's a hint because mm-hmm. obviously his mom died in a hit and run. They hit the deer. The mom slowly died. The deer slowly dying. So he has this yeah. guilt. Yeah. Um, so he tells her to call the cops and, you know, a cop comes, put the deer, puts the deer out of his misery. But then the officer, even though Rose is the one who's driving, the officer asks Chris for his ID. And Rose goes on her like, how dare you? Blah, blah, blah. You know, mm-hmm. she gives him bullshit. But then I'm thinking after watching me, I'm like, this fucking bitch is really putting on a show, man. She's really yeah. putting on a show. Oh, but yes. Yeah, so it's this a, was the love- first. Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. No, I just no, love rewatching this movie I know. because you watch it through a different lens. You're like, wow, this girl is fucking evil because she really knows how to put on a show. I was going to say, this is the first um, major scene where you really get what we were talking about before, how he rides that line and he has these conversations with the audience about, you know, racial di- uh, right. racial discussions about being black. Um, in this society, because on the surface, your first time watching, you're seeing a cop question a black man about an ID and his white girlfriend who grew up, you know, she's upper class, grew up privileged with wealth. She's white. She's not black. You know, uh, he's trying to Chris is trying to comply with the officer. Like, yeah, you can have my ID. Like, I I want to comply. But she's the one that stands up because she's the privileged one. It's like, you don't need to see his ID. And I thought that was great on the surface. But uh, when you watch it again, or when you think back, you're like, okay, now I know the real reason why she was so adamant. She doesn't want to leave a paper trail. She doesn't right. want any evidence that Chris was with her this weekend and his ID being on any police documents because they're up to no good. And right. uh, yeah, that's just another like. And I love how you can leading. take it like so many ways because in the 
commentary wise, you can also be like, Chris is used to this. This must happen to him. Like, if two white guys are getting into a fight outside a bar and he's outside, the cops are going to come up to him and ask him for ID, you know, because he's a black guy. So the mm-hmm. commentary and story wise, Jordan Peele's, you know, gives us two things to talk about, just like you said that. And then I just said this. So yeah. he's already firing on all cylinders just from this yeah. one little scene. He makes you think, but then on the second time through, it's a totally different context. Right. And um, it, it's great. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's awesome. Not, uh, you know, we've already did our spoilers, uh, our our right. spoiler segment to t- tell people to watch this movie so we can just dive right into the spoilers. But um, this is just the first main example of, uh, again, watching it a second time, you realize like she's up to no good because she's a bad guy and her family sucks and they're trying to kidnap this guy and brainwash him. So. She doesn't want his license on more than any much. <laughs> police <laughs> police documentation. Yeah. All right. So, did you realize the first time you watched this, she was up to no good until the reveal? Like, what? I want to know your. Like, uh, when did you this, realize for for this scene? Yeah. Like, or are how, we talking in general? Like, did you when did you get a feeling before the reveal that she was up to no good in the movie? The first time you watched it. Um, or were you shocked by that reveal in the closet? I know we're. I don't no, want to jump too far. But... No, I wasn't okay. shocked. I mean, we okay. could talk about that more. Um, you're you're just talking about in general. Did I get a feeling from her? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I I thought it was like pretty not obvious, but like once you as the audience and once Chris realizes like that this family is rotten, like she's part of the family. Like there's no way she doesn't know anything you know what i mean yeah i agree so and i love how yeah. yeah jordan peele is so clever because like i said the first time i saw it, from that first time we meet her i'm like this fucking bitch i know this I, it but wasn't then, that quick it wasn't that quick for me okay i will say but then yeah. throughout the movie like when they're at their house she has these uh-huh. moments where she's like really like oh my family like they're, i can't believe they're like this and i'm like wait is she really on his side or not so yeah. like, he's so smart yeah. when he does that but again he's us. she has a reason to do that and i, right. I don't want to get it too far right. and it all so it all makes sense but i'm just saying like going. yeah the way he did that i'm like damn this guy knows what he's doing mm-hmm. in this movie she, so uh throughout the yeah. movie she puts chris and us at ease yes when they're when they're by themselves she reassures like, chris which is reassuring us because yeah, the movie like is through chris's eyes shitting yes. on her family basically yeah. like yeah she's like yeah fuck this i didn't think, didn't yeah. think they were like this but they are all right so so after that whole scenario they arrive at her parents house and i love when they're pulling up we see that they have a groundskeeper who's black <laughs> and then when they get out of the car um we see that they also have a housekeeper who's black walter and georgina so it's like what a great start this guy's going <laughs> to a house <laughs> to black servants for lack of a better term <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we're introduced to Rose's parents, Dean and Missy, and um, we get the groundskeeper, like, when they're saying hi, like, he's just staring at them, like, being very, like, weird and creepy. And then uh, I knew right away that I didn't like Dean because they explained that, you know, they got into an accident with a deer, and he's like, oh, good, I hate deer. Like, one down, a couple thousand, a couple hundred thousand to go. I'm like, this fucking asshole. He doesn't like animals. He's already shit. Oh, yeah. Total, <laughs> like, rich, white, pretentious. Oh, yeah. You know, privileged douchebag. Yeah, yep. definitely. <laughs> right, right. Then I'm like, this guy cannot trust him. Yeah. Um. So I love like once they get in the house, like he starts talking like Dean's like, uh, Rose's dad, Dean, an older white yeah. man. He had starts having like a little slang. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> yeah. I can't help but laugh. He's like, how long has this thing been going on? <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck? Yeah. I laugh every time the way. Uh, I can't help but think so. Obviously. Uh, for those watching on YouTube, you can see, but if you're just listening, uh, me and Anthony are both white, so <laughs> we can't come at this from the black perspective, but I got the sense that like a lot of this stuff, including the dad, like trying to talk with like a little slang, like maybe Jordan Peele is like referencing things that happened to him in real life. Like no, he, he, he had he a is, white girlfriend. He confirmed that. Yeah, he, oh, he did. Okay. Like, I don't know about having he, a white girlfriend, but he says he's had conversations in like. White, with people, white people like, kind of adjust yeah. their like the way they talk to him because yeah. he's the token black man you know what i mean oh yeah so even though but, um, we're not black yeah. that was totally believable to me that like this fucking yeah. rich white dude would try to like you know adjust his language to like right. try to make this guy feel <laughs> more comfortable but it just makes it more awkward for him because he's yeah and i love so chris's reaction he gives him a look he's like really <laughs> bang i love this yeah. bang thing going on but i just i don't know every time yeah. i just i die laughing because i'm like Bradley Whitford, you hate him, but you can't help him. Like he's so funny and good, so I know. it just it cracks me up. 
So um, and I want to I want to yeah, highlight this. Uh, Georgina, when he sees Georgina for the first time, he's taken aback from her because, like you said, she's just like staring blankly. And this goes into a bigger, I guess, like it's not really a theory; it's just an observation I had uh, watching it. Uh, the second time last night, I, I finally had this realization, and I thought it was again brilliant. So, Chris's character as a character, this entire movie, he's a black guy in a white environment. He's he's going to his white girlfriend's parents' he's house. He's the fish out of order. Rich. He's the exactly. So, again, I I don't know this firsthand, but I think he conveyed this really well in the movie that he's uneasy and uncomfortable the entire time. Right. I mean, that's fair to say, like he, like you said, he's a fish out of water. So he's on edge and he's making decisions and reacting to certain situations in this movie the same way the audience is, because we're watching a horror movie and we're on edge because we know it's a horror. We're rooting for this character. Yeah, we're rooting for this character, but we're we're having the same reaction that Chris is having because he's in this uncomfortable environment and we're in an uncomfortable environment because we know it's a horror movie. So things like that happen at the dinner party. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I wanted to say this right off the bat. He like on the surface, let's just say like Chris was a white guy and like that happened. He might have brushed it off and like believed the dad and like, Oh, it was just a seizure or whatever. But because he was in this strange environment and he was on edge from the get, from the get go, he would like, was starting to put the pieces together that something's not right. And I thought that was brilliant. Um, it really makes a protagonist, like you said, that uh, audience wants to root for because oh, yeah. he's not, you know, brain dead and he's, you know, he's like, aware. He's very aware. aware of like, well, dude, sketchy not shit. only is he going to meet his girlfriend's parents for the first time, which is nerve wracking for anybody, but yeah. <laughs> also she didn't tell, I mean, not the, I mean, it shouldn't matter, but unfortunately sometimes it does. She didn't warn them that, you know, like this is the first black guy I'm dating. So, uh, you know, that's going to have a conversation right then and there. And then they eventually tell him like, yeah, we're also having a party with like a shit ton of our pretentious rich friends coming over. And it's going to be like, he's going to be the token black guy who's getting asked, all these uh, stereotypical questions. So it's like, yeah. he's going through a lot <laughs> just to meet his girlfriend's parents. Oh yeah. But, um, I mean, the we're getting ahead of ourselves, alone. but yeah, it, yeah. it's just like, <laughs> damn, this guy, like I feel so bad for him. But, uh, so after their initial meet and greet, Dean takes uh, Chris on a tour through the house and he ex- does explain, which is important that, you know, we had to seal the basement up. He, that's all he says. So we don't know anything about the basement. And, uh, we find out that, we get shown Missy's office, who's Rose's mom again, and we find out she's a psychiatrist and that Dean is a neurosurgeon. Again, two very important things. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're having like small talk as I walk through the house and uh, Dean's like, yeah, I like I like experiencing other cultures. And then he does the line. He's like, I would have voted for Obama for a third time if I could. <laughs> the exact yeah. line that Rose said he would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we meet with Georgina. And again, she's very... Uh, She's very, like, not standoffish, but she's awkward when the first time Chris meets her. It's a very yeah. weird interaction. Um, yeah. And again, and, uh, yeah. we think it's super creepy because we know we're in a horror movie. Right. So we see that. We get, like, super unsettled. And Chris, being in this, like, super white environment, all of a sudden sees right. this, um, you know, black lady. But she's, like, just staring at him super weirdly. And, like, like you said, not standoffish, but, like... Like, kind of like she's afraid to move, and he's. Like, I would say taken the back. term like, that I have to describe her is like robotic. Okay. Yeah. 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 Very like so, Stepford um, Wives. Exactly. Yeah. Well, this movie yeah. has a lot of that. Those vibes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so right after that, uh, Dean's like, you know, I know what you're thinking. Uh, you know, white family. Yeah. Black so they servants. go outside. Yeah. <laughs> and he's yeah. like, I hired them to take care of my of his par- of Dean's parents, and then you know when they died, I couldn't let them go pretty much saying like he's doing them a favor like he doesn't he wants to keep giving them work and mm-hmm. then he goes he does the obama line which cracks me yeah. up every time <laughs> i thought that was great too him explaining the why georgina and the uh what's the other guy's name what do they walter. call him walter why they are there because this is an example of he's not technically lying 
to Chris. So like the first time through when you watch it and then you see the ending at the end, you're like those fucking pieces of shit. Like they were leading in mom. But then when you watch it again, you're like, wait a minute. Yeah, they were brought here to take care of the grandparents. Oh, they really took care of the grandparents. And now he can't bear to (laughs) let them go. He's not lying. (laughs) Yeah. He's like just vague enough to make it believable because he's not telling a complete lie. So it comes off very authentic. And like how we're doing this right now, it just shows how clever, like he deserved that win for the screenplay because his writing is so clever in this movie. Yeah. So oh, it's good. so good. It's such a strength of this movie. It's great. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so after that interaction, we cut to, you know, all four of them are in the backyard. And uh, we find out, you know, uh, Chris, they're having like small talk. And, you know, Missy, she's like freaking being so overbearing. And she pretty much like hounds Chris about his family. And we find out, you know, Chris's dad wasn't really ever around. This is when we find out initially that Chris's mom died in a hit and run when he was 11. But he says, you know, I don't remember much from that time, you know, from the trauma, you know, I don't remember much. So we just find out right then and there that, you know, his mom died in hit and run. And then they say, all right, we don't have to talk about it. Um, So then we switch over to the topic of poor Chris again, how he smokes. You know, Dean's like, oh, are you a smoker? And he's like, I'm trying to quit. And then he goes, oh, Missy can take care of that for you. She's a hypnosis. I'm like, right then there, dude, you know, (laughs) you don't want to deal with that. But he's like, yeah, it works like a charm. And I love Chris right away because he's us. He's like, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> That's was like his exact yeah. response in that scene. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they say, like, you know, we're happy that you guys could be here for the party. And then Rose, she forgot. She didn't know that there was a party this weekend. So apparently uh, we find out that, you know, it's a tradition they've been having since uh, uh, Dean's dad has held the tradition he's carried it on that their whole i guess i don't know neighborhood family friends come over for like a garden party so now we know poor chris is gonna have to put up with this shit too <laughs> hmm. of course she forgot conveniently course, because yeah. Yeah. if she would have told him that the party was that weekend there's no way chris would have went <laughs> I, mean, I wouldn't go either. I mean, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so and then we get the uh the next georgina scene yes this is a good scene this so is where I really yeah. was like, okay, something fucked up is going on with Georgina. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so she's refilling like all their drinks and uh, she pours Chris drinks, but it overflows. Then she's looks very, she looks uneasy as she's pouring his drink. And then, you know, she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And then Missy, she just goes, why don't you go lay down and get some rest? But she doesn't say it in like an endearing way. She's like, get out of here, bitch. Get in the house. That's pretty mm-hmm. much how I took that line. Yeah. It but, seemed um, like Georgina was in like this trance. And was kind of like well, just once, frozen. Well, my opinion then, is that she saw Chris and she wanted to help him. But obviously she physically can't because she's not in that body. She's in the sunken place. That's what I got yeah. from that. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's yeah, why, uh, I think yeah. you're right. Uh, her seeing uh, their next victim right. like um, was enough. Because she has that, like, shake in her face, like she wants to do something, but she obviously can't, because we find out she's unable to. Yeah, and then I think one of the best scenes you will see at the end, uh, towards towards the end, after the, uh, during the dinner party, after the dinner party, is her upstairs with him, and you really see that. No, 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 She's trying to get out. Yeah. (laughs) Get out, yeah. I love that line. It's like, no, 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 no. no. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, so uh, Georgina, she goes inside to rest per demand by Missy. Missy's also like a fucking bitch. But um so then Jeremy, the brother, arrives and he's a character, man. He is a character. So we cut to yeah. dinner. <laughs> the eye roll. If you're not watching and listening, Nolan just rolled his eyes. I, I don't really particularly care for this character. I know you're not supposed to we're like him and that's intentional. But yeah. it's not that I don't like him. I just don't like like the fact that he's in the movie this is going to be my one nitpick about the movie oh really I, maybe maybe i think it was the actor that bothered me i think but maybe if it was a different yeah, yeah no no, no. i i'm not yeah. saying bothered me in the context of the plot i'm just saying bothered me like you know you know overall like his performance okay. I, I wasn't a fan of and um like every time he talked especially watching this movie back again like i just wanted him like especially this scene where he does this whole speech i just wanted it to end like i really wasn't engaged by it so well yeah okay well i love that he's in the movie because (laughs) i love the i love the moment in the conclusion where chris really gets his uh 
his fuck you moment to him. So that's why yeah. it was all worth it for that. Oh, satisfying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So we cut to dinner after we're introduced to Jeremy. And first of all, how disgusting did you find this story when he was like, yeah, Rose, she used to like keep a toenail collection. I'm like, this fucking bitch is a psycho. Get the hell out. Get the hell out. This- <laughs> <laughs> she bites yeah. her toenails off and Chris, keeps them? What the Chris fuck? Chris plays it off like he's, he's like, like Haha, enjoying cute. it. I'm yeah. like, what? That's not cute. No matter who yeah. says it, that's not cute. <laughs> yeah. so, so, um. So then he tells another story about them, like him and Rose and they were kids. They had a party and he just comes off like a super douche. He's like, yeah, I was hooking up with the hottest girl ever. And he's just like, Rose is like, do you hear how you sound? I'm like, yeah, this guy's a, I can't wait for him to get killed. But uh, <laughs> Chris is like being such like a bro. He's just sitting there like nodding like, all right, dude. But then uh, Missy goes to get dessert. I mean, I love the when she opens the swing. First of all, swinging doors in horror movies are always a plus. But when she opens it, you see Georgina just standing there like <laughs> with the tray. I'm like, damn, there's something wrong with this girl. But uh, then uh, Missy goes in the kitchen and uh, Jeremy goes like, dude, are you an MMA fan? And uh, Chris is like, no, man, it's too brutal for me. And then then we get this stereotypical, well, have you been in street fights? And he's like, with your frame and genetic makeup, you could be a genetic beast. I'm like, what? what is this conversation <laughs> going to? Yeah. And then... uh. You probably hate this. You probably hate him even more for this. But Jeremy, he tries to like play wrestle, I guess is the term. But uh, like, thankfully, Chris shuts that down before it can go anywhere. But he's a typical douchebag of the drunk guy at the party who's like trying to mess around. But he's saying like things that are out of line. That's how I would describe him. Uh, the one line that I thought was interesting from him in this scene was the father tries to um dismiss him, him and up, say I think, much, yeah. yeah shut him up and says i think we've had enough from you and he says a line um i'm paraphrasing here but he's like you know you've had your turn now it's my turn to like get to know well, him in a way like, so uh, like yeah, again yeah. on the surface that seems like kind of normal like an overprotective brother maybe trying to get to know the new boyfriend but now that, now that we know the meaning like right. there's kind of an, a little extra layer there too right. he wants to get to know the new you know, body that they brought in. Like right. the genetic, like I said, to... the genetic makeup of this. New yeah. 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 Host. I thought that was a good line. That was host. like the only line from this scene. And I he liked. plays it off well because he does say, he's like, you got to hound him. Like, you know, this is my sister. I want to hound him. He plays it off. Like, like you said, like I'm yeah. the protective brother, but you know, there's ulterior motives. Like this guy's mm-hmm. not, he doesn't give a shit about anybody. This guy. Yeah. Um. So after that whole sequence, you know, that was the first day. After that first day, I'd be like, Rose, I don't know if this is going to work out. <laughs> That's what I would say if I were Chris. But, you know, they're getting ready to go to bed. And, you know, Rose is pretty much just complaining about them. She's like, wow, they're no different from the cop. Like, she's trying to be like, oh, I didn't know my family was like this. And then Chris is like, I don't want to say it, but I told you so. So that's a little hint to see Rose. She's still playing off, you know, no, I, my family could never be like this. You know, the Rose perfect. is brilliant because one yeah. of the strongest... I want to say emotions that you can see from someone is, especially someone you care about is disappointment. Right. So grows acts extremely disappointment, uh, disappointed towards her family. So it kind of, and then she admits, she says she's sorry and that she's wrong. She was wrong. So it kind of lets Chris's guard down and he like, he puts his laptop away and he's like, no, come here, come here, come here. It's okay. Like, you know, you don't have to be disappointed in your family. That's just, you know, I hate to say I told you so, but I thought that was a good scene. And again, that was um one. This is one of the scenes that kind of makes you think, OK, like she's admitting that she was wrong. Like maybe she's not as bad as we think, but something's definitely going on. So don't well, trust them bitches. Don't trust them bitches. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then we get a really super cool scene. So it's overnight and Chris, he can't sleep. So he's walking through the house and then we do, we get like, he walks through a hallway and then we get a creepy little jump scare with Georgina, like creepily walking behind him. It was random, but it was cool. Um, so then he goes outside to smoke a cigarette and we literally get a shot of Walter, the groundskeeper. He's just sprinting towards Chris and then he just makes like a 90 degree angle turn, like right before he gets to him. And I'm sorry. And then he turns around and then he sees Georgina. She's just staring and like, almost like, it almost looks like her eyes are like twitching and she's staring out the window. I'm like, dude, if this isn't a sign to get out, I don't know what is. Get out. Get out. 
so yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> so Chris goes back inside and Missy, she's in her office sitting there, almost we, uh, we know she's waiting for him to come back inside, you know, after the fact. But she's sitting there, you know, all in it. She's like, oh, come sit with me for a little while. Come talk to me. So Chris goes into Missy's office and then she asks him, like, you want to know how the hypnosis works? And then he's like, well, I'm sitting here, I guess so. So she says, we use focal points to guide patients to a state of heightened suggestibility. So then we're all, um, I'm thinking, I'm like, dude, you don't want to be in this situation. Yeah. So then she pretty much gets aggressive with him. She's like, do you smoke in front of my daughter? And he's like, I'm going to quit because she's playing it off as she's trying to give him this hypnosis. So he stops smoking. But in reality, obviously, she's not. Um, and then they're she super just concerned together. about his smoking habit. Right. Yeah. Right. And right. we you, know you why smoke in front of my daughter, because, blah, blah. Right. Yeah. We know why, because, you know, they want him. They want the health, the most right. healthy body possible. Right. So the bid will go up when they start bidding for him. Right. Yeah. Oh, so messed up. But then she pretty much cuts to, she's like, oh, what about your mother? Like, where were you when she died? And then uh, he gets, you can, I love his, uh, his facial acting is so good. But you can tell he gets that alert. He's like, holy shit, she's already in the process of hypnotizing me. And, you know, so she starts stirring her tea. And then he's like, I was home watching TV and it was raining at night. That's the night my mother died. And then once he tells her that, he hears the rain. So he's transported into, you know, that night, his, the night of his trauma when his mom died. And mm. we find out she was coming home from work and she didn't come home. He didn't do anything. He just, you know, sat at home, watched TV. He felt paralyzed. He didn't call anyone because he thought that if he called anyone, it would make it real. And he starts scratching his chair that he's sitting in. And then this is, to me, this is his uh, for your consideration Oscar clip. He's starts tearing at the couch and you can tell his reaction to what she's saying and the emotion of reliving his past. He just gets these tears like streaming down his face, but he's also like his eye acting. I don't know. This dude is like amazing, but um, you know, he's like, I can't move. I'm paralyzed and it's horrible. And she's like, yeah, you're paralyzed. Just like the day your mother died when you didn't get up. I'm like, Ooh, this fucking bitch. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, I just want to give him a shout out because like that was just, amazing amazing performance in that sequence oh, it was definitely she, the it's highlight great, right yeah like you said he's his face acting because he becomes paralyzed in this scene right but he still conveys so much emotion and what the hell is going on in his mind like it's you're with right there with him you can feel everything that he's feeling almost and it's fucking great and yeah. it's so smart because you can argue that he's paralyzed because she's hypnotizing him. Or he's paralyzed because he's reliving what happened to his mom. So it's, again, brilliant that Jordan Peele is giving these, like, well, multiple well, layers both. to everything. Yeah. Well, right. Well, but she, it's smart. She she's literally hypnotizing. Place. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So then after that, um, she pretty much, she tells him, she says, sink into the floor. And then she just says, sink. And then we get this super, super, super uh, cool shot where I would say... He pretty much falls into this abyss of darkness. And uh, Missy, she goes, she like hovers over. I love the way it's shot. I can't even describe it. You have to watch the movie. Mm. But she hovers over him and she's like, now you're in the sunken place. And then right after that, Chris wakes up, you know, next day. So Mm. he's like, was that a dream? Did that happen? We don't know. So, you know, yeah, I love that yeah. shot. I love the way it looked. He's like it floating. Like he He's like floating abyss. back. Yeah, it's so cool. And then, but you, he can still see her because it's like a window or like, right. I, I think it's like a TV. It looks like a TV that well, he's yeah. falling away from, but it's his eyes, what his eyes see. And right. he still can hear everything, but he's just, he's getting further and further away from his body and his eyes. He's, he's aware, but he physically can't do anything about it. No. No, right. he's totally, yeah. He's, he's aware. He has all his he's senses. Hypnotized. He just can't talk or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's that night. And then he wakes up, you know, he's like, oh, shit, was that a dream? And he looks at his phone and uh, we get a we get a pick from Rod of Sid. And then uh, it's important because right after he sees that, he plugs his phone into the charger. So that's important. At this movie. point, did you think of what, what were you thinking at this point? Um, were you thinking what, what? most people were thinking? 
Like, like I mean, as in, like, what's going on? At this point, yeah, I mean, at this point, like, I mean, I'm thinking I knew, obviously, they were Georgina was too. hypnotized, right. and right. they're going to hypnotize him at the end. I, I know, got that, but I had much. no idea what they were doing to the bodies. Like, that wasn't clear to me yet. Like, the surgical yeah. whole shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, mean, I had no hint of that. I just like, oh, maybe they're hypnotizing them and keeping them captive. That's what I thought. You know, the first time okay, I saw it. yeah. So I feel like that's what I didn't like, know. Everyone thought at this yeah, point. Yeah, I didn't know like yeah. how deep it actually went. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, I also uh, thought yeah. the sunken place could have been a great title for the movie instead of Get Out. I love the title Get Out. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't. <laughs> it's such because it's so. I love sunken. It's the commentary sunken place. on it could uh, be, yeah. Because when you watch a horror movie and, you know, Laurie Strode walks into the house, what are you yelling at her? Get out. Get out. It's commentary on horror movies that the title alone is just commentary in every horror movie. The audience is yelling at these characters to get the fuck out. I'm not here to argue the title. I love the title, too. I'm just saying that's such a cool name for it. Oh, yeah. I think that could be like a cool band name or something, too. I think it's the way they they effectively (laughs) use that phrase, like. She, I, I mean, I will give credit to the mom, uh, Catherine Keener, that every time she says it, I get like a little chill up my spine. Yeah. Like, now you're in the sunken place. I'm like, oh, yeah, shit. it's a cool term. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So the next day, uh, Chris, you know, he wakes up. That could be a title for the prequel. Yeah. Um, that's something I yeah. want to talk about. One of yeah. my nitpicks of this movie, but I'm, I'm going to save that towards the end. Okay. So let's keep going. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. So he goes outside the next day. He's trying to start his day fresh, which I would be like, I'd be packing my bags, but whatever. So he's taking pictures and, uh, you know, well, I he think goes, he thinks it was a dream. He does. No, he, he doesn't yeah. know. He doesn't know what to believe. He doesn't yeah. Know. He's like, was that a dream? But, um, so he's outside taking pictures and he goes over to say hi to Walter. And, uh, Walter is just like, again, he's speaking so like robotically and creepy, but he does apologize for last night. He's like, <laughs> he's like, I'm sorry. I was doing my exercise. I'm like, what the f- what kind of exercise was that? <laughs> this, was, this was his excuse was he was exercising. One of the creepier and funnier scenes because his yeah. voice is so funny. It's like and his such smirk. A, his smirk is super, so creepy. So we know that it's the the white grandfather that's in Walter. Yes. So like knowing that, Roman. like yeah, his voice is like so white and it, <laughs> it, you know, again because he's in this uncomfortable environment. Like hearing that, like Chris was like what the fuck is yeah. going on what because he even says the rose like it's not what he said it's how he said it yeah he says that he just says yeah. like his demeanor like everything about him um yeah but uh walter asks he goes does did it work you know you were in the that office for quite some time last night and then he goes i should just get back to work in my own business so that just puts in chris's head he's like holy shit she did hypnotize me last night yeah so he goes, goes oh yeah that's right i forgot yeah. about that yeah so chris goes to rose he's like i think your mom hypnotized me last night he goes, I can barely remember anything, but the thought of a cigarette makes me want to throw up. And she's like, oh, man, she did it. She did that. Like, just, again, pushing it off. Like, oh, man, she hypnotized my boyfriend. No big deal. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the party. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, so then we start seeing everyone there arriving for what they call the garden party. Rich people talk. Um, <laughs> so we start, Chris gets introduced to everyone. And it's just pretty much, like, stereotypical, like, talk about like the black race because the first couple we get introduced to they're like oh like you ever play golf and he's like no not really he's like well i know tiger woods i'm like okay (laughs) okay (laughs) you're naming the one black golf player you can think of they're like yeah i love him and then this other woman she's like admiring chris's body and physique and she's like grabbing his arm and like touching his chest (laughs) and she's like is it true what they say to rose i'm like it's all like the typical like stereotypical like things that like you people would converse about and then this other couple they're like yeah well now it's all blacks in fashion now i'm like oh my god this poor guy just needs to get out of this scenario so um he runs out of there and he goes to take pictures of like the gazebo area and we are introduced to um we see that he's taking pictures we see logan we're introduced to a guy named logan who we find out is the guy from the beginning of the movie the opening scene so he sees logan in the opening scene and he's um he goes up to say hi to Logan, and Logan's acting exactly like the groundskeeper and the housekeeper. He's like, all right. He thought he was able to have, like, a down-to-earth conversation with someone else, but nope. So then he goes by the gazebo, and he meets Jim Hudson, who was a blind art dealer. And they, you know, Jim knows the way to Chris's heart, and they bond over the art and photography and all that. 
So they have actually like an actual pretty normal conversation. Like Chris doesn't feel awkward in that moment. Yeah. So that was a very They're good discussion of that character. And he, yes, Chris knows exactly. about him. Yeah. Right. Next time you watch this movie, anyone listening, just watch all the party guests in the background and what they're doing well, I love like, this behind scene. Chris's back. Yeah. So, yeah, this one, I mean, obviously this one, it, they're it's not in the a, background. They show well, know, you right up so front. Creepy. But yeah. just the subtle things that happen in the background throughout the party, once you know what's going on, it's like, oh, yeah, that's super creepy. Yeah. It's- Messed up. So yeah, so after that conversation, Chris goes back to the house because he wants to go check on his phone upstairs that's been charging. And once he like goes through the common area, the living room, whatever you want to call it, and goes up the stairs, everyone stops talking and they just stare and look up. I thought that was that was really unsettling. That creeped me out. So yeah. they just stop and stare upstairs. So uh that's another hint. You're like, they're all in on this shit. Yeah, they're so, either all in on it or like they're brainwashed too. Like, what the fuck are they all doing? Like, what, are they real? Like, what's going on? Right. Yeah, super right. weird. It just because normal yeah. people don't do that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, he goes upstairs and uh, he checks his phone, but he realizes that his phone was not plugged in. So somebody un- unplugged it, so his phone wasn't able to fully charge. And then he believes Georgina unplugged his phone, and he tells. Rose that he thinks that Georgina doesn't approve that they're in a interracial relationship pretty much. That's what he tells her. And uh of course she pushes it off again. She's like, Oh, you're just because you're just so perfect, right? He's like, No. So <laughs> she's such a bitch. But uh she he calls Rod after that and he tells Rod that he got hypnotized. <laughs> and Rod is like literally us. Rod's the audience. He's like, fuck that. How are you not scared of this shit? White people love sex 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 slaves. <laughs> And then yeah. he makes a hilarious like Jeffrey Dahmer joke that I can't I can't repeat because I don't it's just so long, but it's it had me like falling off my couch laughing rewatching yeah. the movie. <laughs> He's like I know. Jeffrey Dahmer, that motherfucker is killing black people, chopping their heads off and fucking them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so funny. So Rod literally tells him in this moment, he connects the dots for him. He's like, uh, these people they're trying to like these he, these black people are probably hypnotized by the mom. And that's literally what's happening. And he says that to uh, Chris right then and there. But then um, after that, you know, Chris says he has to go. And then Georgina comes in and she apologizes for the phone situation. Pretty much saying, you know, I was cleaning and I lifted it up by accident. You know, typical excuse, blah, blah, blah. And then he tried. This is the scene you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And he tries to have like an actual conversation with her. And he's like, you know, too many white people. I get nervous. I get it. And then she's like super, super weird. And she looks like she wants to say something again. But she and she almost starts crying. But then she starts laughing. Again, great acting. Great great acting. What is this actress's name? We have to highlight it. Because she was amazing. I don't have her name handy. But uh, she was great. Um, Oh, Betty. Betty Gabriel. She was great. Um, so she starts, she like has, she gets teary eyed, but then she starts like laughing and she's like, oh no, 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 no. The Armitage family, like they would never, they're great to me. I'm like, what? <laughs> great scene. How did you great take scene. that? How did you um, take that? Right then, in the, like at the first time I watched the movie, I took it as she was hypnotized and she was almost trying to escape it in that moment. But she couldn't, okay. and that's why she like had to push back. She's like, no, 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 no. So she was almost afraid to admit anything to him, to ask for help or to warn him, because she didn't want whatever re- repercussions were going to happen to her. Because obviously, I didn't know the real deal yet. Mm-hmm. How did you take yeah. that? Um, I thought it was the person trying to, you know, come up from the well, sunken place and speak. And when she's saying no, 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 it's she's not actually saying it to Chris. She's saying it to the person in her head that she took over the person's body. She's saying it to that person like, no, 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 no. Get back in your place. I feel like that was right. a double meaning. Well, there I could take that on rewatch, but no, the no, first no, no. watch, obviously, I didn't. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. No, that's on what rewatch. I meant oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how are you I taking think it? she's yeah. trying to, well, the the actual black person is trying to come up to say something but yeah george or that we find out the grandmother i don't remember her name she's pretty much pushing her back down you know 
yeah. fighting it. Yeah. That's what yeah. I got. I, yeah, I would, yeah, I would say that's yeah. literally what was happening probably. Yeah. But I think the no, 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 wasn't to Chris. I think it was to, oh yeah, person, yeah, 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 yeah. Like trying but to get her, like, no, you can't talk. As it is to Chris. Yeah. As like, no, yeah. no, 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 no. They're a great family. Yeah. Again, yeah. clever, clever writing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So Chris, after that, first of all, after that, I'm sorry, I would have to leave, but uh, he goes back outside <laughs> and he gets thrown into another conversation and he's pretty much asked, he's like, do you think being black is more of an advantage or a disadvantage? And he calls Logan over again, the guy from the beginning who we think his name is Logan. He calls him over for like assistance and help. And again, Logan gives like this robotic answer like, oh, I don't really know. I'm just thankful to be here pretty much. And Chris like snaps a picture of him on his phone. So it flashes and Logan freaks the hell out. And it's almost like he comes back to and he yell he starts screaming at Chris to get out. He says get out like a bunch of times, like get out, get out. Well he does. Get out now. It's not almost literally I mean, he definitely he li- is the He literally yeah. says that. Yeah. It's yeah, it's Andre. Yeah, we could so, say it. Yeah. Right. It's Andre. Andre is the yeah. actual person. Um, is the actual they, person from right. the first the scene opening. of the movie. Right. Yeah. He was renamed. We don't I, after. I didn't realize that at first. Oh um, really? Did you know it was him from the moment you saw him? Because he's that so he was clean the guy from the opening scene? Oh yeah, yeah. I knew. Yeah, I know. Oh, you knew? I'm not very good yeah. with faces like that, especially when they change, you know, okay. the complexion and he shaved his facial hair. So I didn't pick up on that right away. It wasn't until like a little later on. I was like, oh, wait, that's the guy from the first scene. Okay, yeah, I got it sense. right away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So after that, uh, he's taken into Missy's office and they close the door. So obviously he's put back into his trance in that scene. And, yeah. uh, you know, he comes back out. He apologizes to Chris. He's like, you know, I think it's time for me to leave this party pretty much. So then Chris is like, I got to get the fuck out of here and go for a walk. So he goes for a walk with Rose. And um, as they are having their sidewalk, Dean, the dad, and the rest of the party, they look, they're like sitting by the gazebo. And it looks like he's instructing them. And like, I would say it looks like they're playing bingo. But then we zoom Well, he out. says the reason they go for a walk is because the dad says the most ridiculous, unappealing thing. Oh, he yeah, goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't we get this party started again and have some sparklers and uh, <laughs> let's do sparklers and bingo? Like, what? He's like, yeah. So, like, this- that was obviously code for the daughter, for Rose, to, like, get right, him get out of the party. Right. So, right. like, he picked the, like, the two lamest things possible. I know. Sparklers and bingo. So she can say, oh, okay, let's let's go for a walk. We're going to go for a right, walk. Right, right. So on so, the surface, he just thinks she's trying to save him from sparklers right. and bingo. But obviously that was planned. <laughs> so so as they're uh, you know doing their walk, we again, we think they're playing bingo, but we get a zoom out and we see this big picture of Chris in the front. And we it's revealed that they're pretty much auctioning him. Yeah, and it's a silent auction. Yeah. Jim Crazy. Hudson... The blind guy who Chris met a little while ago, he wins the auction. Uh-huh. So um, then we cut back to Chris and Rose, and Chris is pretty much telling her, like, I need to go right now. You know, he lets her know, and then he, he does, like, divulge finally what happened to his mom. He goes, I feel guilty because my mom, she actually initially survived the hit and run, and he didn't do anything. So she was left for dead. You know, while he was watching TV, she didn't die right away. So he's thinking if I didn't leave her to die on the side of the road, you know, I could have helped her. She pretty much, she died alone on the side of the room. So then he tells her this vulnerable thing. And then Rose comforts him, you know, and makes him feel good. And he's like, all right, I love you. I want you to leave with me. So she knows, again, she knows how to get to his emotions because he's mm-hmm. confiding in her because he still trusts her at this point, which I don't know if I would have fired him, but whatever. He still does. Yeah. And, you know, he's like, I love you. Thank you for like listening to that. And then he's like, I want you to leave with me. So. This was one of the first big red flags for Rose in this scene because he says, I want you to leave with me. And she's hesitant. And he goes, I'm leaving either way with or without you. And she kind of, it's a pretty dick move. She like uses the fact that he just um, talked about his mother and how he didn't like, like he left and his mother on the he side feels of the guilty. road. Yeah. And she goes, what are you going to leave me? Like, you can't leave me here. Right. Like, that's so unfair. Like, what the what a fucking bitch like she's you, feeding like, into she's feeding off of yeah. his trauma because so she's manipulative like, oh, yeah. yeah yeah so that was like one of the first instances where i was like whoa rose like what the fuck like you're gonna like stay and make the guy right. leave on his own and make him feel guilty about leaving you like it's it's your family it's your fucked up family like why is that so bad that he wants 
like he's not leaving you in the middle of nowhere. Like it's literally your, your childhood family. home, like with your family. So I thought and that was can, fucking and weird. And you can also tell how manipulative she, because once he tells her that story, she, she right then and there, she's like, how can I use this for yeah. leverage? For oh me? yeah. And he, he unfortunately gives in and buys it. Well, because like he says, doesn't right, want to leave anyone. Not gonna, exactly. He, doesn't he leave anyone gives in home. because of his, right. what happened to his mother. He said, all right, I'm not going to leave you. Like I left my mother pretty much. Right. Yeah. He's like, I love you. Please come so. with me. And but us like, as an oh, audience, we can see through that. Yeah. Right. Well, some people didn't, though. Because I saw it in the theater, and a lot of people, when there's a reveal, they were like, oh. The reaction to that reveal was great. But anyway. so oh, yeah. yeah, it was still a good reveal. But that was one of the big yeah. red flags. Where I was like, oh, maybe she's not like a yeah. great person. <laughs> so yeah. um, as they, you know, they're, they're arriving back at the house. It's getting dark out. The party's wrapping up. Everyone's leaving. And as Rose and Chris arrive back at the house, like, they're her immediate family, like her brother and her two parents are just like staring at them so creepily as they're walking back in the house. They don't say mm. anything. And I'm just like, this is, this is the night shit's going down. You can tell <laughs> yeah. From that. yeah. So Chris is packing up and he sends a picture of Logan, you know, Andre to Rod. And then Rod calls him immediately, immediately. And he says, that's not Logan. That's Andre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, we find out that, Chris did know him. They knew they his sister. They yeah. knew uh, Andre's sister, Teresa. And, you know, and then he's like, he came to a party with an old woman. <laughs> and then Rod's like, sex slave, sex slave. <laughs> right <away. laughs> yeah. It's so funny. And he's like, you need to get the fuck out of there, man. So Chris's phone dies right then and there. And he's really panicking. He's like frantic. And he's like, Rose, get your fucking bag. Get the keys. We got to go. So Rose's like, all right, let me go get my bag. So then. As Rose leaves, we see there's conveniently a door in Rose's bedroom open. It's like a mini, mini closet, like escape door, like escape patch room. It reminds me of like the little Harry Potter's room in this, in the first movie, his little uh, closet under the mm. steps. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so he notices the doors open, obviously on purpose. And uh, he finds this case with pictures of Rose and numerous black men like and they're like, in romantic positions, like she's been, da- she's dated other black men. That's what it looks like. Yeah. When she told a him, lot. right, a, a lot, lot not like one, not two, like <laughs> thirty, like four or five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we see. Well, I'm, at I'm least exaggerating. Like five I'm or exaggerating. Six. Yeah. yeah, I'm exaggerating. But uh, <laughs> yeah. so it's like, all right, she lied about that. So right then, and there, if you didn't know, oh, you have to know that she's in on it. And then but the, the big was thing so reveal good. was Which Georgina and Walter. You see yes. the photos of them. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you see the photos of Georgina and Walter, and you're like, okay. But we don't know who's implanted <laughs> in them yet. Yeah. So, uh... Yeah, oh, so, no, we don't know anything yeah. at this point. Like, with so, the procedure and stuff. Right, right, yeah. right. We don't know anything about the procedure. So Rose I thought Chris was in, good. Yeah. So Rose comes back in, and he uh, Chris plays it cool. I thought right. this was a good decision from him, because he's, he's upstairs, like trapped the keys. upstairs. Right. Like, he needs right. to get in a better position to leave before he can freak out, so... He oh, doesn't yeah. confront her about the photos. Nope. He, she's like, "Oh, uh, what were you doing in there?" He's like, "Oh, I was just looking for my camera." And he plays it really cool. He's like, and, ready um, to go, pretty much. You find the keys. It. She's like, "No." So yeah. she comes back in. She's like, "I didn't find the keys." He's like, "All right, let's just fucking get out of the house. Then we'll find the keys." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so we'll do it on the way. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so they're trying to like get down those stairs and leave, and like the family's pretty much harassing Chris and saying shit, and you know he's begging Rose like, "Please find these keys." And the and then Dean's like. So, Chris, what's your purpose in life? And he's just saying a bunch of crazy shit. <laughs> and uh, Chris is like, Rose, get these fucking keys now. <laughs> it's it's funny, but it's also suspenseful. And then Jeremy, he, like, starts swinging at him with a fucking lacrosse stick. Fucking yeah, asshole. Like, randomly. I'm like, what the fuck yeah. are you doing? So, uh, then we get, might be my favorite scene of the movie because it's, this. she does it so expertly. She's fuddling for the keys and she's actually starts like hyperventilating and crying. And then in a split second, she's like, pulls out the keys. She's like, you know, I can't give these to you, right? I'm like, oh shit. That was a perfect delivery of that line. Yeah. Cause totally she's like sober. sobbing and the then iconic. she just goes straight face. She's like, you know, I can't let you have these keys, right? I'm like, oh shit, this fucking bitch. And then, uh, so we obviously, Chris just throws his bag down. He's like, all right. I'm fucked. <laughs> and Missy tells him to go to this, tells him to sink. And he goes into the sunken place. So he pretty much collapses. Um, So he passes out. Well, he doesn't pass out. He goes in the sunken place. 
And then we go back, we cut back to Rod. He's trying to call Chris. And uh, Rod researches Andre. And we find out that Andre obviously was reported missing. So now he's a missing person. And uh, Rod, he's such a good, he might be the best friend in a horror movie. Like he's top five best friends in a horror movie. Um, he goes to the police station. He tries to report it, but he like goes into this whole hysterics of, you know, sex slaves, hypnotize, you know, and they don't believe him. They literally, the officer, she brings in the rest of her crew to come laugh at him pretty much because they don't believe, they literally laugh at him. Not pretty much. Yeah. Um, so they don't believe him. So then we cut back to Chris. He wakes up in the basement that was sealed off earlier in the movie and he's tied to a chair with uh there's like a mounted deer and there's a tv like an old school tv in front of him and a video pops up and it pretty much is uh dean's dad the grandfather he's explaining the situation so he explains that the family they transplant people's brains into other bodies and it gives them preferably black bodies and it gives them you know this stereotypical physical traits of a black person and it's almost like a twisted form of uh you know immortality that they get so they they want the traits of these black people um so they can go on and be superior which is also hilarious commentary because of how racist they were (laughs) throughout the whole movie um so it's kind of like that was a bonkers a reveal in my opinion but they say the host their conscious remains in state, but they're in the sunken place. So they are alive, but they're like powerless. They can't physically do anything about it. So that's the big reveal of what the hell is going on down there. Crazy shit. I did not see Super- that that was a reveal. Oh, no, me neither. Super creepy reveal. And he says something interesting. He says, our order has been developing this procedure. So there's some kind of order that's been like, generational passed down and and he's like you assume at that point that all the yeah yeah. he's like my phone is going to crack it yeah yeah Yeah, everyone in the movie uh, i guess is part of this order like at the party and stuff and their family's the one to like perfect this procedure well again dean's a neurosurgeon so he does this part but missy does the hypnotizing part so that's that's why his profession was important from early in the movie but then uh, after that we get we cut to a feed of jim who's the one who won the auction and he's speaking with Chris through like the intercoms, like, do you have any questions? And then he does say, he's like, even though the the family, they target mainly black people, he's like, I don't care about the race. I just want your eyesight. Which is like, all right, dude. So then uh, Chris is hypnotized again to go back to the sunken place. And uh, I love this next scene. We cut back to Rod and he calls Chris's phone again, but Rose answers. And again, she's doing some great acting in this scene. She's uh, She goes full uh, psycho. But um, she's like, yeah, Chris left two days ago after being after getting all paranoid. And uh, Rod hangs. He's like, can you hold on a second? And he mutes the phone. He's like, you lying bitch. <laughs> I know. He's so I good. <laughs> yeah. So um, he knows, obviously, she's lying. So uh, she tries to put it off as like, oh, I know that you really want to be with me. And he's like, fuck you. That's my best friend. Again, he's he might need the trophy for best friend ever award. Um, mm-hmm. So then. uh jeremy the brother he comes to get chris for his surgery but we find out that chris was scratching the chair just like he did when he was a kid and in the in the original office when he was getting hypnotized and he's able to scratch the chair to get cotton so he put the cotton in his ears so he wasn't hypnotized and he's able to uh he blocked that hypnosis trigger and he uh bludgeons jeremy with a ball i'm assuming you enjoyed this scene when he uh, just pretty much whacks him in the head a bunch of times. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good scene. That was cool. He's fighting back. I love a fighter. Um, yeah. I saw so, some interesting uh, commentary from Jordan Peele. He said that uh, it was not cotton. a coincidence that he picked cotton to free himself. Yeah, yeah. He liked the uh, irony of that. Right there, picked cotton. Of a black yeah. guy picking cotton. Yeah. yeah. Clever. So he, he Again, def- that was definitely intentional. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Love that. So obviously, uh, he knocks Jeremy. Well, I don't know why he didn't hit Jeremy more, but Jeremy, we think he's dead, but, you know, he's unconscious. So then uh, we get Dean coming in to take Chris for the surgery, but Chris impales him <laughs> with the antlers from the deer that was mounted on the wall. So he does No, he quick. doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah, no. You First you see, um, so their planning was pretty poor. 
they should have got Chris in the surgery room. Like, no, because now they just have a gym because station ready to go. He's operating on on gym at First, the same yeah. time that well, he's Chris is supposed his, to like, be. Yeah, 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 but he's not in the same room. I don't know no, why no, Chris no. wasn't in the operating room yet. They should have like he should have helped his son with Chris. I and think then because had he's the two bodies. Hypnotized. He's still to get hypnotized from. Well, the, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, like yeah. make sure he's hypnotized and put yeah. him on the operating table. Yeah. Like very poor planning. I don't know why they did it. Like like were they in that much of a rush? Like stupid. So anyway, yeah, he opens up Jim's brain and cranium. Yes. And um, cool it's scene. not until he realizes that the uh, Chris isn't here yet, that the sun is taking a while, that he goes right. into the hallway to look for Chris. He's like, what the and fuck's he gets going the on? Antlers. He gets, he gets yeah. impaled super quick. There's no fight. He just pretty much yeah. impales him right away. But when he impales him, he knocks over a candle, which sets fire to the operating room that Jim mm-hmm. is still sedated in. So, you know, Jim's a... Yeah, and again... Um, this is the one nitpick I wanted to touch on. I'll, I'll, let, I'll talk about it now. There's a candle in the operating room. So it almost seemed like it was some sort of ritual that they were doing. Yeah. And again, it plays on what the grandfather said. He said our order. So I don't know if it's like some ritualistic order, um, you know, spiritualistic, um, religion that they do, but why else would there be a candle? You know I, what I mean? Like I mean, in the I operating room? Simple. I was like, it adds to the hypnosis vibes, the seance vibes. That was my simple explanation. Really? Yeah, but that, that kind of goes into my nitpick. I, I wish we got uh, that a little bit f- uh, fleshed out a little bit more. Um, I would I would love to see a prequel movie of The okay. Order. The, the history and, and all of that. Uh, and the, the history yeah. and stuff and what okay. this ritual is and stuff. And yeah, I, I just... It was creepy, See, the fact that we don't get a lot, but like they kind of touched on it and you like, it left me wanting more. I was like, yeah, oh, I think that's in my opinion. That explanation video was more than enough because we literally found out the, like, the nitty gritty details. And once the action started, like I didn't want to take a break, I just wanted to keep put the pedal to the metal because pretty much the mm-hmm. last after that, it's just nonstop him trying to escape. Yeah. Um, well, no, I mean, the whole layout of the movie and the third act was fine. I don't have an issue with that. I just. I'm a type of guy who likes to dive into these, you know, uh, settings and plots. And when I get little like hints of something, I kind of wish it was explored a little bit more. Because, again, I'm going to say this almost every episode. I'm a sucker for like good villains and stuff. So anytime you get like little hints about the motives of villains in these horror movies, like I want that to be explored more. So I don't necessarily think it should have been in the movie because like you said it's it's a great movie and the pacing is fine but maybe like do like a prequel movie would be really fucking badass to kind of explore that and stuff like the, when the grandfather was younger and like trying to develop this and you know more about the cults or the order that they call it and what they are and if they're like satanic or like illuminati like i, I don't know yeah why they do black people <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's Jesse uh, Owens. <laughs> That's uh, Dean's death scene. And then, uh, you know, so Chris is escaping that area and he goes upstairs and Missy attacks him. But Chris stabs her like, and kills her right away again. I think it might be a shot to the eye. We don't really see it, but I think he stabs her in the eye. And uh, then he's attacked by Jeremy again because Jeremy didn't die. And this is my favorite part. He overpowers him and kills Jeremy. He pretty much just stomps nonstop on his fucking head. Kills him. Mm-hmm. I love that part. Yeah. Um, so then he's escaping the house on the way out. He hits Georgina. And we are revealed that Georgina is possessed by the grandmother, Marion. And he knocks her unconscious. But he feels bad because, again, his guilt is overtaking him. So he takes her From and carries mother. her to the car. But yeah. she awakens and she attacks him. And then, you know, in their struggle, he crashes and Georgina's killed. Yeah. And then um, we see Rose. She's armed. And she comes out with Walter. And he's possessed by the grandpa. So, uh, and I love how she's like, come on, grandpa, let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. it's so funny. So Chris, he's actually smart. He's a smart final guy in this scene. He uses the flash on his phone to kind of like um, get knock Walter out of it. So mm, Walter, Before we get too far, we yeah, forgot to yeah. mention like one of the more iconic scenes. Where Rose up upstairs in her bedroom with the Fruit Loops. Oh, yeah, the, first of all, what a fucking crazy <laughs> I don't know how you bitch. Can forget that. She's yeah. putting 
She's not even eating cereal. She has a bowl of Fruit Loops dry and then a glass of milk next to her. Crazy bitch right there. You, How do you not just have cereal? <laughs> and she straw? drinks milk out of a straw. And Disgusting. she takes one Fruit Loop and doesn't even eat the whole Fruit Loop. She takes oh, and she's, a bite and, of half of it. And yeah. by the way, she's also researching like NCAA basketball players to be the next victim. <laughs> the next victim, yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was kind of funny. I think I, I saw a YouTube video of uh, Jordan Peele going through like different fan theories. And there was one like crazy fan theory i think it was just a case of someone looking too much into this movie they were saying like is it like does she separate the milk and the fruit loops because she's separating whites and colors and jordan peele was like no you're wrong like that's totally not if anything she would want to mix them first of all and he said no it was literally like we just wanted to have like a scene where it really conveyed how psychotic and crazy rose is (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, I that's, they, I got, I, like I said, psycho mission. bitch. Once I saw that she like separated the <laughs> yeah. milk in this year, I'm like, oh, you're fucking crazy bitch. But, yeah, um, she's listening to music and like looking up her next victim. Yeah. It's so yeah, creepy. She's crazy. Uh, so yeah, but so yeah we'll get that, back. Yeah. yeah. Back to Walter. So he uses his flash on his phone again because he remembers that that worked on Andre. And um, I just want to say, um, like in the video, the old school video, they said they kind of perfected this procedure, but. If your procedure is that um, fragile to where a flash from a camera phone can, like, undo it and, like, jolt the person out of the sunken place, like, should you really be, like, trusting this? And, like, because, like, Andre's character, I forget his name, the the persona he has, you assume, like, he came to the party with his older wife, so you assume that he's been in that body for... I would safely say at least a few weeks, if not longer, maybe like a year. I don't know, like a long time. So like they're trusting this procedure where like what what would happen if a camera flashed while he was at home? Like he would just like fucking go crazy and go to the cops and like I wanted more like, you know, that's one of my nitpicks. Like, okay, say a camera flashes in front of Andre. Is he permanently out of the sunken place now? Or is it like he's only out of the sunken place momentarily because when it happens at the party, they have to take him into the other room and the mother has to kind of do her hypnosis again, I assume. So like, does he have to go there every couple weeks to get like rehypnotized to keep the bond strong? Or is it like permanent? Continue to work on that. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like I would have liked to know a little bit more details on that. Like if a camera flash is the only thing that's stopping these people from, escaping like that's not a very concrete solution <laughs> i don't know like that could get them in trouble pretty well, quickly they say it's taken generations to figure out just this step so they're still figuring <laughs> yeah, that shit like, out <laughs> yeah i think they jumped the gun they got a little greedy <laughs> and that was their downfall <laughs> but i do like when he uh snaps walter out of his trance walter does step up and he uses the rifle and he shoots um rose in the stomach before shooting himself so now yes. rose is so walter yeah. pretends to still be the grandpa because right. Rose doesn't see the flash. So right. he turns around. And he's like, let me do it. Give me the, the rifle. Right. And um, he shoots Rose. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. So then uh, Chris, he begins to strangle Rose, but then he finds himself for some reason, unable to follow through with it. I'm sorry. I'd fucking snap her neck in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he does in the alternate he... ending. He well, follows yeah. through in the alternate ending. Yeah. So as he stops, we see, sirens approaching and it's so clever again because jordan peele he knows what he's doing because usually in a horror movie at the end you know the heroine or protagonist the hero of the story you're like oh thank god the cops are here they're safe but in this movie you're like oh shit the cops are coming they're either gonna find all these bodies and kill them right away or they're gonna arrest him and you know he's gonna be blamed for these murders so you don't want the cops to come but then we get this yeah. epic 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 shot of rod coming to the rescue he steps out of the car like oh thank god it's rod so uh (laughs) rod saves the day he comes to get chris and i love this as they're they leave rose to bleed out they don't even make sure that she's dead (laughs) yeah before they leave i'm like (laughs) fuck that but anyway uh i love rod's like i don't want to say it but i told you so (laughs) and then uh yeah chris is like how did you find me he's like i'm mother i'm t.s motherfucking a (laughs) 
yeah. we handle shit. That's what we do. We handle shit. This yeah. situation <laughs> is handled. <laughs> like, yeah. That's the only way to end this movie. The only way. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and then it ends. Great, Get great out. Ending. Yeah. Get out. Yeah. Awesome. So good. I love we the should ending. Say yeah, the ending was so good. That there yeah. was an alternate ending where Chris, it was the cops and not Rod, and Chris is actually locked up and blamed for the murders. And he and a Rod comes to visit him. He's pretty much just like, I need some names. And he's like, no, I was able to stop it. That's all that matters. And uh, it's kind yeah. of a downer ending. And I will say, as someone who loves downer endings, the the ending they went with was the only way to end the movie, in my opinion. Um, did you hear the commentary? The yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was interesting. So that was the original ending. No, it was. Yeah, they I had know. filmed that as the original ending. And yeah. he, he mentioned the fact that it was, um, this is Jordan Peele I'm talking about, that he when they filmed this movie, it was during the Obama era. So it was during a time where maybe people who are ignorant think that racism is better in America, but it's really under the surface. So he really wanted this original ending to kind of let people know, like, no, this is a real thing that still happens. But he decided to do reshoots because after the Obama era, when we get into like the 2016 election cycle, um, racism started being brought up organically right. throughout the country. So he felt like that ending wasn't needed anymore. So he wanted to get like a feel good ending where the, the, the black protagonist wins. And they, he thought that was important. So I love that he, um, was looking at the times in you know real time and adjusting his movie based on what he think you know society needed I guess in a way I thought that and was he was like was really after cool. all Chris went through he needs to have a good ending because when I saw it in the theater everyone when they heard the sirens they're like oh no but then when you find out it was Rod everyone would literally cheer they're like thank God because we're rooting we love Chris so much we want him yeah. to win we want him to get away we want him to get out yeah. and he yeah. got out so we love I love that ending. I think, I think it was, it was um, the good choice because it, uh, like you said, it leaves people um, feeling good about the movie. So when they go right. talk about it with friends, they're like, you got to see this movie. It's it's epic. I, I, if we would have gotten that darker ending, I don't know if people would have had the same enthusiasm. You know what I mean? Um, so and I prefer dark have, endings, but in this movie, yeah. I yeah. I didn't. I like the way they ended it. I love the way they ended awesome. it. Awesome. All right, guys. So that's Get Out. Any uh any final thoughts on the movie before we get into our never split up moment and our score? Uh, I think it's a great movie. Like I said, it's a fun, entertaining, creepy movie that has relevant commentary. Jordan Peele knows what he's doing. It's it's so solid. It's not the scariest movie you're ever gonna see. Um, like you said, it's pretty accessible, but the writing for for a first time director, especially in this genre, man, like he just hits it out of the oh, park. Yeah. The writing, the direction, the acting, the cinematography, the score, like you mentioned, is just all top notch. And uh, I hate the term elevated horror, too, um, because it's it's trying to demean the rest of the horror. And like you said, it gives critics an out to like to like a horror movie and not feel like they're dumbing down their tastes because they call it elevated horror. And it's just. It's a horror movie, man. Just say you like horror. Say horror to, is good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No matter what yeah, kind horror of horror. is allowed to have good acting and good direction without you having to like call it a different thing. It's no, it's horror. And horror is so. the best because you can explore all these themes within a horror movie because you can mm-hmm. go batshit crazy and you don't have to say it straight in your face. You can do these backdoor themes where you're making a great yeah. movie, but you just subtly include this kind of shit. So it's brilliant that mm-hmm. he's choosing it's a great genre, genre for it yeah. because the horror elements help accelerate those right. themes so it's great and yeah, i don't we think talked we mentioned about that it, a lot but, uh, this movie's paced superbly it goes yeah. by like so swiftly like yeah wow it's great yeah which is what a horror movie should be oh great yeah yeah i mean pacing i mean it's important in every genre but especially in a horror right. movie to keep that tension and it keep that mystery and, and builds, suspense and then it, it just, just builds goes nuts so in the end but yeah it's so great 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 movie i love this movie so much i think it actually was my favorite movie of 2017 when it came out i think this and it were like neck and neck okay yeah i'd have to go back and look at all the releases but it's def- definitely up there for me it might be one of my favorites too 
So let's get into our never split up moment. Uh, again, I won last week's poll for the first time, so I get to go first. Oh, wow. So this I'm excited a, to, to go first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. And um, I, have a, I have a unique one. So it's not, um, it's not Chris I'm talking about here. Not going with Chris. It's our first protagonist of the movie. It's Andre. Andre. And it's, it's not the first scene of the movie either. It's Andre during the party scene when Chris flashes his camera at, on, at Andre and Andre comes to the surface. Okay. And that's where we get one of that iconic scenes where he says, get out, get out, get yeah. out. And he freaks the fuck out. Dude, I, I kind of said it before. We assume that he's been in that body. Like it didn't just happen yesterday. He's been in that body for quite some time now. So he's had time to think this through. Much like what Walter did at the end of the movie, it kind of confirms my moment because Walter played it smooth. He should have fucking played that shit so fucking better, so much better and not freaked out when he saw that flash and he had his moment because like you're surrounded by the villains. You're surrounded by the family. Like, dude, play it cool. Pretend that you're still in the trance and then try to get Chris alone and explain to him like, dude, get the fuck out of here. This is what's happening to me. You need to save yourself. But instead he just goes full on crazy and tries to like, he doesn't even convey anything. He literally just says, get out, get out, get the fuck out of here. Like, how the hell is Chris going to interpret that that in the moment? To get like, the fuck out. I thought, <laughs> yeah, but like, like, it was such poor planning. If I was in the sunken place, I would have thought that out so much better. Like, if I got my time, I'm going to, not only to save Chris, but to save himself, right? Like, and again, maybe it's because he only has a limited amount of time before he gets sunken back again. But we assume well, the we know, reason yeah. he gets sunken back is because of the the psychiatrist, the mother, does it to him in the other room. But, like, dude, play that more cool. Walter plays it perfectly at the end where he grabs the gun and pretends to still be the grandpa. He right. could have played that so much better. And even if he, like, didn't play a long game, he could have, like, walked up to Chris and, like, whispered in his ear without anyone really thinking anything of it. Uh, so okay. I thought he uh, did something really dumb there where... I thought he had a ton of time to plan, like probably weeks, if not like months. So I would say to that, I think when you're comparing him to Walter, I think Walter literally had years to like get used to this situation. So when he came out, that's why he played it so cool. I think you think so? Yes. Because it seems like they just perfected this recently. I think well, um, because you know, we, but when did his when did his parents were when were they going to die? Because that's when this happened. How long yeah. Did, so yeah. I think that. uh I don't think that Andre was because he's on the missing person report. I don't know if it said how long ago, but I don't think it's been like a year or anything. I think it's been maybe weeks, maybe. I think weeks is a safe bet. Okay. Yeah. But I think yeah, that, I, think, I think maybe like when he first came out. You don't think that's enough time to like sit with your thoughts? Like you literally I, can't do anything. You're a passenger. <laughs> well, I think that he literally you know like, snapped out of it. He was like right away. What's the first? He's like just like frantic. You know what I mean? That was my like yeah. defensive. Like he was just like, I don't know what to do. Let me yell, get out. Like, he's trying to save this guy, yeah. but he knows he doesn't have I much know. time to yeah. do anything. So I see what you're saying though. I mean, it's a good moment. Incredibly stupid. I think. Interesting. Yeah. So your moment uh, yeah. wasn't a Chris moment. That's interesting. No, no. I thought I'd go a different direction. Okay, with cool. This time. Yeah. Very nice. I like that moment. Spice it up a little Please bit. Please vote for me. <laughs> I'm still losing to Anthony. I got my first win, but let's keep the ball rolling, guys. You okay. Know, Nolan Very fan cool. club. Let's go. <laughs> so that actually was not going to be an option for me at that moment. Um, I was initially going to go with the first night after that guy like sprinted at him. Like, why would he stay after all these creepy happenings? But I'm actually going to go with, why the fuck do you not finish off Rose and kill her? Why are you leaving her? Because what if she was saved? What if an ambulance came right after you left and saved her? She's still out and ready to go to keep killing at the, and keep abducting. At the very end. At the very end. end. The yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why would you stop okay. strangling her? Break her neck. Fucking kill her. Who cares? Kill that bitch. So my never split up dumb moment is Chris. He couldn't find it in himself to finish her off. Fuck that. Kill her. Yeah, well, I mean, you came to defense of Andre, so I'll kind of do the same. Uh, I think the whole theme, the the whole backstory theme of Chris throughout the movie was not living with himself after letting his mother die. So he doesn't want to do another decision that he regrets. Like the rest of the killings were pretty justified. He was but trying would to get he the regret fuck that out, killing? But... Would he regret that killing? 
I she's think literally so. yeah, smiling, smirking she's at him. She's defenseless. She's smiling, yeah. smirking at him as he's choking here. You know what? Just as someone, but she's defenseless. Like even if she lives, what is she gonna do? Her parents are dead. They're, they can't perform the procedure anymore. So there's no reason for her to keep abducting. You're not you know? giving her enough you credit assume... for being an evil, <laughs> evil <Yeah>. mini mastermind. <laughs> I don't think he could have lived with himself if he choked her in that moment. I, I really don't. So I'm going to defend. I know if he explained that. to Rod that situation, Rod would be like, motherfucker, we're turning around and running her over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to do something a little different too and go that he didn't kill her. Not anything that about him not leaving. I'm going to go. He okay. didn't kill Rose. Yeah. Okay. No, I like it. Two different moments. Yeah. You have the moment that doesn't cost him his life or anything like a typical never split up right, moment. Exactly. And I have a moment that's not the main character. That's a little, you know, different. So, it's okay. Like we made it a little interesting this week. Yeah, we did. Cool. I like, yeah, two good moments. So guys, yeah. Um, Paul's going to be open after this episode airs. So by the time you're listening, go vote. It's going to be available on Spotify. There's a poll option. If you're listening on Spotify, uh, we can't, we, we, we misspoke last time. We can't do a YouTube poll yet. Uh, so sorry for anyone that was looking for the YouTube poll. I think we need a certain amount of, um, subscribers. So, Please subscribe if you're on YouTube. Uh, we could definitely use the subscribers. We're a brand new channel, brand new podcast, and we want to create that community. And I think YouTube is a great avenue to explore that community once we get it up because we can run the polls. And obviously, the YouTube comments section is so easy to navigate. And um, we love talking to you guys. So if you're on YouTube, leave us a comment, like the video. I hate to be, you know, subscribe and like. Typical. <laughs> yeah, typical. But, uh, Definitely subscribe. It could definitely help us out because we're, uh, click that button, that bell button, whatever they say. Click that notification <laughs> yeah. bell if you want to get. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, no, guys. Uh, but we just appreciate you guys listening. Uh, uh, we really appreciate it. So uh, we're not done yet. We're gonna get into our reviews now. But we also make oh, sure and, uh, you, the we poll, vote on the Twitter. poll is gonna be on Twitter, Twitter, Instagram. Too. Eventually, Sorry, we can only do that. an Instagram story, but. Go try to vote on yeah. Twitter. We like the interaction and we like to see your votes. We want to, we don't know your never split yeah. moments too. You know, let us know. We post a lot on Twitter. So Twitter is another great place to interact with you guys. So definitely follow us on Twitter. It's at never split up pod on Twitter and on Instagram at yes. never split up pod. So definitely go on there and uh, we want to hear from you. So wh- why don't we get into our uh, reviews? Uh, I went first last time. So why okay, don't you, you? Uh, take this one? Okay. Yeah. I mean, this movie this movie is fantastic, especially, like I said, for Jordan Peele's first feature film. I really love this movie. Ooh, this is going to be hard for me. Uh, <laughs> because it's also, like, it's recent, too, so I haven't been able, like, some of my favorite movies I've sat with for, you know, 20-plus years. So I'm going to say... Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give this movie an 8.6 out of 10 oh okay okay very respectable score yes i was i was expecting you to get into the nines just because it's not an all like nines for me it's like they're going to be some of my all-time favorites i mean this is a great i love this movie so much but it's not like Mm -hmm. in my top 20 horror movies of all time or anything you know what i mean but it's a great 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 horror satire filled with a bunch of commentary and i love it i mean 8.6 is nothing to sneeze at okay great Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to say the same things. It's not an all timer for me. Again, I said, uh, I, my initial viewing was, was good, but I feel like it got hyped a little too much. I wish I saw it opening weekend. Uh, yeah, I, I don't great. remember the crowd. I don't remember the crowd so much. Maybe, uh, I had like an, like forgettable crowd and with a better crowd, it would have been better. But, um, I, I like this movie more and more every time I watch it. If if I would have given this movie a review or a score the first time or the second time, I would have said like probably like around an eight. But again, it's climbing. So yeah, I'm gonna give this movie an eight point six as well. Wow, eight point six. Right, cool. Yeah, I actually had that number before you said it, so I'm not copying <laughs> you. Yeah, for anyone. No, you know, because I, I was thinking, you know, I was like, do I go higher? But then I'm like, yeah, it's not a nine for me, but it's not. Now. below an 8.5 for me either it's like right in that yeah. it's teetering on like yeah. almost perfection line for me mm-hmm. yeah 
And we are, we do have to start getting into um like looking at our previous scores. I have yeah, on I should, I'm gonna, here I'm gonna start to having to see them where up. Yeah. these movies stack up and like you know I don't have a lot of uh, movies in the eights, but I have like Krampus is an eight point five, or I'm sorry, Krampus is also an eight point six. Oh well. Wow. So Krampus executes what they do perfectly, but th- it's such different movies. You can't compare that, like, these two. Yeah, Get Out is just as good in its own way. Right. So. I think at eight point six is fair. Okay, cool. Yeah, awesome. Same score. <laughs> yeah, that's twice now we had the same score. All right, so that 10 was episodes. That's get out. What do we have going on next week? Next week we are finally. It's taken eleven episodes, but we're getting into our our roots of our of the name of the podcast. We're getting into really our first slasher franchise. I would say. Yeah, we're covering the uh, we're covering Chucky, guys. We're gonna cover the original Child's Play. Yes, super excited for that one. Yes, yep. and if uh, you haven't horror. seen it or you need to watch it again before the episode, it is available on HBO Max. We just confirmed that, so definitely check that movie out on HBO before or next buy week. the Blu-ray. Like me, I have like endless <laughs> copies. <laughs> yeah, that'll be an interesting one. I don't know um, if I've seen every single Child's Play. I have, I have seen yeah. at least four of them, but uh, I get lost on that franchise. Um, okay, I have. Well, I, I really would love to sit down and watch all of them, kind of like over a weekend or something. You but have to. Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna cover these back to back, guys. Um, we're we're probably gonna cover Child's Play and uh, cover a few more movies in between because we don't want to burn ourselves out on one franchise. Yeah. and I feel like it gets stale if you just keep doing the same franchise back to back. So we'll split it up a bit, and uh, we'll start with the first one and just go from there. Yeah. Do you want to announce our second movie? We we actually have two movies lined up, so we can announce uh, another movie that's going to be coming out in two weeks. Yeah, so we try to plan a little bit ahead this time just so we can plan out all of our viewing uh, schedules and everything. So not next week, but the week after Child's Play, we are actually going to be covering a movie that was in my top 10 of 2022. So again, make sure you check out that video. I had a lot of fun recording that. And this is was towards the upper part of my list. This is going to be The Menu, the brand new movie from 2022. Um, I don't yeah. want to say too much about it, but again, this one's also available right now on HBO Max. If you haven't seen it yep. yet, check it out so you guys can interact and give your thoughts when we release the movie. I believe it's also coming out on Blu-ray next week. So either way, just make sure you check it out before, you know. Oh, perfect. Two, yeah, so the next two weeks, it'll be everywhere. So check that out. I cannot wait to talk about that one. Obviously, showing my hand a little bit, I adored that movie because it was in my top 10. We don't know what yeah. no one thinks about it. Um, he saw it after we recorded that video. So I can't wait to get into it. Yeah, it just uh, released on HBO last week, and that's when I watched it. So I have watched it by now, and uh, a lot of people are talking about this movie because it's now on streaming. So it's uh, it's getting a lot of hype and and stuff. It was on a lot of people's top ten lists, so I- I'm excited to cover it. Yeah, you'll you'll get my thoughts. I haven't played my hand yet, but I have some thoughts on that movie, and I'm excited. Okay. But again, first things first, we're going to cover Child's Play next week. Really excited for that. Get into some uh, fun. You know, 80 slasher doll, vibes. slasher. <laughs> yeah, 80s that's gonna be doll, a hard slasher. movie for me to rate because that movie was part of my childhood. <laughs> really? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Great. So, yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, again, you can catch us on Twitter and Instagram at Never Split a Pod. Please follow us and uh, vote in our poll. We love the interaction. Any final thoughts, Anthony? No. I mean, make sure you guys definitely watch get out and let us know what you think of the movie and make sure you also check out his other two movies because we're going to be covering us and nope eventually too Mm -hmm. yeah definitely so that's it for us guys we'll see you next week thanks bye